to this week's Ask Charlie. Now, while I was down in Devon, I had a good pick of mum's rhubarb and have brought it back up to Sussex with you. And I thought I would share a few recipes. I posted something, I think it was on Instagram, and I had lots of people saying, oh, Charlie, will you share some rhubarb recipes? So I thought there was such an abundance of rhubarb down there that this was a perfect opportunity to, um, to pick it, bring it back and um, cook with you all. Now, if you are new to my channel, welcome. Please do hit the subscribe button, ring the bell to be notified of my weekly videos and leave me a comment. I really love hearing from you. And if you're a regular, welcome back. It is gorgeous to have you here with me. So the first thing that we are going to make today is a rhubarb posset. Really, really easy and you don't need many ingredients. Of course, I am cooking all of this on my trusted arga, but um, you can use whatever you have. So the first thing I'm going to do is weigh out my rhubarb using my scales and then I will give it a good wash. So I'm going to just chop it roughly, peeling off kind of any sort of leafy messy bits from the bottom and just chop it into chunks. You will have to ignore the dogs. <laughs> you can't actually see Florence down there, but she's, I think she's chewing on a stick that she found in the garden. They had a wonderful time in Devon. They thought it was so much fun. I found it quite exhausting, to be honest. It was a really full on week. And, you know, that was the main reason for going down there was to get things ready for the season. Um, but, to be honest, <laughs> there was more to get ready than I had, had anticipated. I feel, um, and those of you that watched last week's video, um, and particularly on my Instagram, I was um, really struggling. <laughs> that bit got a bit ratty. Um, I was really struggling to find a decorator and I was just amazed that we found Mum's old decorator um, Alison accosted him and he was just remarkable. He came, I called him, um, when did I call him? I called him on the Tuesday, he came on the Wednesday and he started on the Wednesday. He could see how dire things had got. It's a really long story and I won't bore you with um, all the details, but um, I had a quite a stressful situation uh, for a few years down there, which is now all resolved. But it means that I need to spend some time um, getting getting the house looking looking as it should be. Um, it got a bit. I got a little bit let down by by somebody. Oh, that's too much. So I only need two hundred and fifty grams of chopped rhubarb for this first posset recipe. So the rest I'm going to use to make into an elderflower cordial, not elderflower cordial, sorry, rhubarb cordial. Um, I'm normally making elderflower cordial, but rhubarb cordial is our new favourite thing. Anyway, I'm going to give this a rinse and then show you what to do next. So I've just got a large um, saucepan and I'm going to put a tablespoon of sugar in there. Now I have got one tablespoon of water. There's a little bit of water still on here. When you're cooking with rhubarb, you don't want to add too much water. That is where people go wrong. So just a little tiny bit of water in there and the sugar, and I'm just going to bring this up to a simmer. And while that is doing, I'm gonna chop some more rhubarb. I spent a lot of time with Billy the farmer down in Devon, just uh, talking about fencing and gates and all that jazz. So I think I mentioned last week, there's 26 acres that uh, Billy rents. And um, I think it's really important for me, not to keep a good eye on him, but to, you know, to be really aware of what's going on. So I can say, oh yes, you know, and that, top corner of that field, such and such needs doing. So just, he knows that I'm on the ball. And I think when you live away, 
um, it's really important to know exactly what's going on. So I make sure when I'm down there, um, I kind of <laughs> check out everything. It's just really busy out there today. It's just a really quiet lane, but there's lots going on, which is distracting me. So, um, yeah, I keep a, a good eye on what's going on. And then I've got a wonderful team of people down there um, that run things for me, which is amazing. And most of them worked for mum, which is really lovely. Now, I can hear that that is just simmering on the argon. I'm just going to give it a stir. Rhubarb is terribly bitter, so you do need to add a little bit of sugar. But as with as much of my cooking, I try to add as little sugar as possible. You could use a natural sweetener, um, but I'm not for this recipe. You could, you know, um, put some maple syrup in or something like that instead. So if it gets really um, dry, you can add a little bit more water. I'm just going to pick out a few bits of rhubarb, so the nice pink bits, and these can just decorate the top of the possets. Um, and that, that's fine, I'll leave that to one side. And then I'm just gonna cook this down a little bit more. And then when it is looking like that, take it off the heat. So I've got one of these, but if you don't have a jam straining kit, you can use um, a fine sieve or a fine sieve with a muslin in, you know, really, really whatever um, you have, you can use. But I find this really handy and I'm gonna use this for my cordial. They're so easy to put together. You can get replacement bags as well. This, as you may have guessed, has been very, very well used, but there's still a lot of life in it. So um, I shall keep it going for a bit longer. But I thought I'd show you how to use one of these contraptions. And then you just put your baggie in there and fold it over the top like that and then you put your liquid in here so i'm just going to pop that in there just to strain through and you can see it's beginning to drip already get that all in so I'm just gonna leave that to do its thing for a while. And I want to collect the liquid in the bowl below. While that's dripping, I'm going to do the rest of the possets. I'm going to weigh 100 grams of sugar into my saucepan. I've just rinsed this saucepan out and using it again. And then 300 ml of double cream. This is a 600 ml pot, so I'm just going to put approximately half straight in there. Now I said that, um, if you saw last week's video, I'm not exactly sure if this video is coming out this week or next week at the moment. I'm just gonna put this on a low heat. Um, because I've got my new website being built, which is super exciting and it may be ready this week. We may have to delay it to week after because I want it to be absolutely perfect. So I'm not gonna rush it. But with my new website coming out, I also have the start of my podcast, Busy House, Happy Home, which I am really, really excited about. So that is coming imminently. And also you may have spotted, I am modeling a new apron. Um, I'll give you a close up in a minute, but this has got beautiful strawberries hand embroidered and then a little Ask Charlie logo here. And I've got new products coming very soon as well. So that is exciting. It's really exciting. There's lots going on at the moment. Um, I need to stir that. So you want the sugar to fully dissolve on a low heat and then you can increase the heat a little bit and let the cream bubble away for a moment. You don't want to overcook it, but I'll bring you up close so you can have a look. 
So the sugar has completely dissolved. So I am going to increase the heat, pop it on there, um, but keep quite a close eye. So I want it to bubble, but I don't want to overcook it. So I will be sort of lifting it up a little bit. Um, the joys of cooking on an auger is you can't get the perfect temperature, but you can adapt by moving things around. So this is something you don't want to be distracted for a moment. You just want to keep a close eye. But I want this to bubble and cook for a good sort of two to three minutes. And I might drop it down to the other ring. We'll just see how we're doing. But you just don't want the bottom to burn. So you don't want the phone to ring. You don't want somebody to knock at the door. You just um, need to keep a close eye. I'm gonna drop the heat down now. I hope that it just bubbles nicely on there. So that has been bubbling away nicely and I've got my liquid rhubarb, which I'm just gonna add in and stir that through. And the acid in it changes the consistency. Stir that all in. It's a lovely, gorgeous colour. And that is done. Simple as that. So I'm just going to leave that just to settle for a moment. So I just thought I'd show you up close the apron detail. And then on the pocket the little Ask Charlie logo in green, which I think is really sweet. Anyway, I'm just letting this uh, settle for a minute. <laughs> Florence has got a teddy that she is playing with. You can notice I've got a little bit of wild garlic in my basket that I bought back from Devon as well, so who would be foraging around here? Um, anyway, I was, I'm going to talk to you while this just settles for a minute. I was at a lunch yesterday and I was sitting next to this gentleman who is fascinating, so fascinating. He um, directs TV and film and things like that. And he did Monica of the Glen and all, all sorts of amazing things. He's such a lovely man. And then he turned to me and said, so what do you do, Charlie? And oh, sometimes I hate that question because how do you kind of explain this to somebody that's a bit older? I'm a blogger, I'm a YouTuber, I don't really know what to say, I'm not very good at kind of what I do. Anyway, I was explaining it to him and he said, well, how do you, how do you film it? And of course, his background is filming, is, you know, TV crews, all of that jazz. And I got my phone out of my handbag and I said, this is what I use. I'm saving up. One day, hopefully, I can get a proper camera. But at the moment, I use my iPhone. And he said, well, how do you get the different, you know, shots and the different angles? And I said, well, I just stop and I move it. And he said, can you show me one of your videos? <laughs> so we're sitting at lunch and I um, showed him. He was like, wow, that's so good. It's amazing what you can do with an iPhone and a tripod and <laughs> trying to get more creative all the time but uh, it's a steep learning curve because it's not not my background whatsoever but I feel like we've got a really lovely community with Ask Charlie. I just have one <laughs> nasty nasty troll on Instagram who I keep blocking and she keeps coming back. I'm assuming it's a she, I don't know, but she really, really, really doesn't like me. And I'm trying not to get upset about it. She does get pretty personal. And it's amazing the assumptions people make about other people when they have absolutely no idea. I think I might just message her back when, it, when and if she comes back again. I think I've blocked her about eight times and reported her to Instagram. I think I might just um, say, like, here's my number or what's, you know, let's chat. 
because you've got all these assumptions about me, but actually, they're so far from the truth. It's quite funny, but it is a bit hurtful too. Um, I know I'm not going to please everyone. You can't always please everyone. And one troll is, you know, is, is <laughs> pretty, you know, pretty good going. Anyway, I put this into a jug because in a jug, it's so much easier to pour in to, I've just got these, um, they're recycled um, glass pots. And I'm just gonna pour my posset in. And you can put, a, you know, fill them up if you want, um, or just, you know, put a small amount per person. I'm, I'm not overfilling them. And obviously, if you are doing this for more, then just increase the quantities. You could use the whole pot of cream and just double the amount of sugar. And you'd want to have about 100 ml of your rhubarb um, syrup. They are. I'm going to taste a little bit. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Delicious. And then I have kept these little bits to one side and I'm just going to put a little bit on the top of each one just as a little bit of decoration. And then till these in the fridge for a couple of hours before you serve them. There we are, really, really scrummy. And I'm gonna eat that little bit because I love rhubarb. So these are now ready to go into the fridge to chill for at least a couple of hours or overnight. I think when you're making a pudding like this, which is obviously cream based, it can be quite heavy and quite rich. So I don't want to uh, overfill it. And particularly if you've got guests for dinner or, or you know, for, for a lunch, I think it's better to have less than be overfaced and then feel rude that you're leaving it or feel sick that you've politely eaten it. Do you know what I mean? I think it's better just to have a small amount and be happy and satisfied. And really delicious, served with a shortbread biscuit, um, something like that I think is really delicious or you know, a sweet biscuit would just be perfect with this. Anyway, I'm gonna stop waffling and pop these in the fridge to set. Right. For our rhubarb cordial, I have got my big agar pan and one and a half kilograms of rhubarb chopped up. So in that goes there. I then have an orange and a lemon, which I'm just going to slice up. This actually is quite an old slightly shriveled orange but it's actually all I had so um, I forgot to get some more but that is fine actually the knife is not working this will do the job but I was wittering on a moment ago about about the troll I um, have so many lovely 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 people that follow me and that are really supportive and really kind and that is what I focus on um, all you amazing people that leave comments and are really lovely and find my channel useful and helpful. Um, for me, it's really important to focus on that and not the negativity. Um, but I just, I just thought it was interesting how people make assumptions. And one of mum's mottos was don't assume, check. And I think that is a really good way to kind of live your life. Until you've walked in somebody else's shoes, you have no idea what uh, what their life is like. And so, don't assume. <laughs> I think it's the moral of this story. Anyway, star anise. Um, I am gonna put, actually I'm gonna put them all in. There's about five, slightly broken up. Star anise and rhubarb work really, really well together. So that is wonderful flavour. Now I'm not adding any sugar at this stage. There is my cauldron of, um, of things. I'm just gonna add about a litre and a half of water, a 
a litre to a litre and a half. I'm just going to see um, how much it needs. I don't want too much water because you don't want to dilute it down. You want it to be a strong cordial. So that is a litre. You can always add more. It's harder to take it away. I am going to add um, a little bit more. So probably 1.2. like that and then I'm going to bring this up to a simmer with the lid on to start with. One of the wonderful things about having an arga is I can pop this into one of the ovens so I don't need to have the lid up so I can bring it up to temperature a little bit on the top here and then just pop it into my simmering oven and leave it there just to soften probably for an hour or so. I'm actually going to take the dogs for a walk so by the time I get back that will be ready. So I can hear it is just simmering nicely. So in to my simmering oven it goes. I'm going to take the dogs for a walk and feed them. By the time I come back, that should be perfect. One of the joys of the Olga, just love it. I'm back from my dog walk. All the dogs are in the house, all the children in the house, so there could be a bit of background happenings. This has been simmering away nicely. So I've just taken this out. It smells amazing, it looks great. There's Lola running around. I'm just gonna let that cool before I put it through my jelly bags. Um, so I'm just gonna literally pop that to one side for a moment. Um, I remembered on my dog walk the chat that I was sitting next to. Um, I said, you know, what are you working on at the moment? And he's working on a movie with Michael Caine and Glenda Jackson. <laughs> I mean, amazing. I think it's their last ever movie. It was fascinating talking to him. And, you know, talking to him about, you know, how I do this. So amateur. Um, and then, you know, the big movie sets with all the cameras and all the gear. And um, I'm so untechnical, but... Um, but, but it works, I think, I hope. I hope you're happy enough with my amateur filming. Anyway, enough waffle. Let's leave that to cool. I'm going to wash up, clear up, and then think about the children's supper because they're all hungry. And I've got my washing up behind me on the Arga. That's what I love about the Arga, is um, I, never, I never dry up. I just put it on there. You can't really see because I've got my straining bag. So I've actually set up two because I don't want to overfill them. Um, but that's what I love about the Olga is I never have to dry up. So I'm just ladling. It's still a bit warm, but it's fine to go into my bags. I'm just ladling this in. The smell, I wish you could smell it. It's just heavenly. The rhubarb and the star anise. Is just incredible together. So I'm going to leave these overnight and then tomorrow I will show you the next step. So I'm just going to come home and say, oh gosh, what are you up to now? <laughs> There's always something going on in this kitchen. Just look at that colour. It is so beautiful, it is so pink, it is so gorgeous. I love it and the smell is even more amazing. I am gonna take these over here. Don't need them anymore. And I will wash those up. The bags can go in the washing machine, which is really handy. Um, and I've got my big cauldron right here. I am just gonna tip in the liquid. I actually might weigh it for you. Let's weigh it. I'm going to ask Alexa to do that sum for me. Alexa, what is 2,154 minus 777? It was precisely. 
2154 minus 777 is 1377 grams. So that is really good to know. So that is um, what we've got. In fact, I can just press the units and it will tell me that that is basically two litres. So that is handy to know. Two litres of um, our rhubarb syrup. So I'm going to pop that in here now. I try and give you quantities where possible. And then you can work out the ratio of sugar that you need because I try not to put in any more sugar than is necessary. Now, the great thing about this recipe is you can add as much or as little sugar as you like to taste. I am going to put 600 grams in and then I will check it and just see whether it's too tart. Now, you're, you've got to remember that this is a cordial so you will be diluting it down with water. You can either dilute it with sparkling water or just still water is um, equally as delicious. So I'm just gonna measure out my sugar. So that's 600. And then I'm gonna put 500 grams of citric acid. The citric acid works as a preserver and I buy it in bulk. Um, the great thing about using citrus ac citric acid is it's going to last longer stored in the fridge or you can freeze it. So 50 grams of that and then I'm just going to tip that in. I'm going to put it something in there. Um, I'm just going to put it on a low heat. Stir it gently until all of that sugar has dissolved. And I don't know if you will have noticed, but I'm wearing a different necklace. And this um, Keiko gave me for Mother's Day. She bought it for me and she had it made. So, so thoughtful of her. If you hold this up to the light, I actually need to take it off to look at it. There's a picture of Simon and the three children, which is just so thoughtful and so gorgeous. So this is my new favourite necklace from my darling girl. It um, it arrived late, so she, she's kept saying, Mummy, there's something, there's something special coming for you. Oh, there's Archie. Hi. <laughs> um, there's something special coming for you and it was absolutely worth the wait. So gorgeous to have. Anyway, I'm going to take you over to the Arga and um, oh God, just got to a friend here and I had told them I was filming but they were obviously forgotten anyway I will just take you away from the Arga that sugar is melting really nicely and I've got my jars ready to put it in so the sugar is just dissolving nicely you just want it to be on a low heat you don't want it to boil you just want to you know warm it through let all that sugar and citric acid melt completely. And then it's important to do a taste test and make sure that you are happy with the sweetness. So I shall go and get a spoon. So let's just check. That is actually pretty tart. So I'm gonna add in a little bit more sugar. Probably about, I'm gonna go for 75 grams, so I'll just weigh that out. And pop that in. So I'm just gonna do another little test. That is much better. So in total, I have put 700 grams of sugar in. Um, and that I think is really, really perfect for my taste you may prefer it sweeter and that's a good thing about this is you can just start off um, and then add a little bit more I wouldn't go, go crazy and put in loads of sugar in one go because you can't take it away but just um, yeah build it up so I ended up putting in a hundred grams more um, but that is perfect so I'm just going to take this off the heat and leave it to cool so I'm just leaving this to cool for a moment. I am using kilner jars and a jam funnel. 
we get we drink this um you know not not all the time but we get through it quite quickly so i'm just going to store mine in kilner jars in the fridge you can put it in plastic bottles and you can freeze it or another great way to do it is to um pop this into a jug and just pour it into ice cube trays and freeze them and then tip the ice cubes into you know Tupperware or something and then you can just take out a couple of ice cubes and use that with sparkling water or you could add it to um, you know a, a vodka and tonic or something like that or a gin and tonic and just have this wonderful um, infused rhubarb flavour or you know make it into a cocktail or something like that so many different options but freezing it in ice cubes is a really really great way but today I'm just going to use my Kona jars and using a jam funnel just makes life so much easier so I am gonna just pour it in that colour is just gorgeous it's still a little bit warm so I won't secure the lid on my Kona jar just yet. If you are freezing it, um, you can just um, pop it into a plastic bottle, reuse bottle, make sure that it's you know thoroughly washed out and just leave a little air gap at the top because obviously it will expand when it's frozen. This I'm just going to put straight into a jug in the fridge and store that in there into my jug it goes and it's just quite handy because we'll use this the children are on holiday so we will um we'll get through this quite swiftly let's just put the last bit in there and there is my rhubarb cordial done i really hope that this week's um video has inspired you to um to cook with rhubarb and to use rhubarb. I use rhubarb in so many different ways from, I've got a great recipe for a rhubarb frangipan, um, which is basically in pastry, basically a rhubarb pie. Rhubarb and strawberries work really get well together. I love a rhubarb compote, so on um, my granola and my, with Greek yogurt, just delicious, really delicious for breakfast rhubarb crumble rhubarb and apple crumble you know, there are so many different things to do but i just thought rhubarb cordial not not that many people make and then also the um the rhubarb posset is just a really really easy pudding to to whip up and you know very little ingredients so i thought i'd show you something slightly different and also things that you can do on the arga and the great thing about having the arga is you can just slow cook and I think that is a lovely way to do rhubarb. Um, I love having stewed rhubarb in the fridge, it's just great. Anyhow, I really hope you've enjoyed watching. Thank you for joining me, thank you for your time. I am sending you lots of love. I am hoping that the new website is either up when you watch this or if not live now imminently it's gonna be really close we will see and these uh gorgeous aprons will be um, available on the website soon as well which is super exciting and keep your eyes peeled for busy house happy home the most important thing to do is to subscribe to my newsletter on my website and i don't bombard you with emails but when i have got new things coming you will be the first to hear about it and then um yeah you won't miss out on anything so that's a good way i will leave the link to my website down below so you can subscribe and be kept up to date with everything anyway lots and lots of love and i will see you again very soon